Hi, this is Ian Holtquist, and we're here at South by Southwest premiering Animals, which I had the good fortune of scoring. And you're watching the AU Review. Yeah, uh, there's a lot, even just films, but also uh, a lot of composers that I've been looking up to. Um, one of the first ones that kind of got me inspired was Nathan Johnson, who scored Looper and uh, a couple other ones recently. And he has worked a lot with uh, kind of taking found sounds or samples of everyday things and turning those into instruments which that really got us going with the idea of taking a lot of animal sounds and turning those into instruments, which we got to use a lot throughout the score. Um, there's a lot of bees buzzing and uh, kind of lions roaring in the Lincoln Park Zoo that we've pitched down to like whale noises and stuff like that. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that stuff. That's gotta be fun to play with those sounds and, and, yeah. and explore what you can do with them. Had you done, had you played with animal sounds? I've done a fair amount of sound design in the past for my own stuff. Um, in like working with Impassion Pit, I'm really used to working with synths and programming and whatnot. But this is, I think, probably my first time actually working with animal noises specifically to form something totally different. I don't think moth swings actually have any sounds of moth wings. In it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you have uh, worked on other films before. I guess, I guess talk us through the process of what got you started in, in film composing. Obviously a very mm -hmm. different approach than, uh, than writing music for uh, something that you'd see on the stage. Sure. Or, or is it? Uh, it? It is different. And I actually, um, I graduated from Berklee College of Music in film scoring. Um, so it's kind of something that I've been wanting to do for years. Um, funny enough, Passion Pit kind of took off as a distraction from following film scoring, <laughs> which I, I definitely lucked out on. Um, but it's, you know, it's something I've loved since I was a kid, and it's something that is always just kind of caught on to me. Um, I've always loved music, but I've also always loved film just as much, if not more. And this was kind of my way of marrying the two together. Um, and I feel that it's different where you're always writing, one, to a very specific story, and two, almost to someone else's vision. Because mm. the first thing they teach you is like, it's not your film. It's a director's film <laughs> or a studio's film, whatever it is, uh, which I kind of like, actually, because it kind of puts some restraints on you. Mm. Whereas, you know, the world of music today, you can literally do anything and everything. And uh, you kind of almost need like barriers to be put up to kind of like, point you in the right direction. Otherwise, you could just do whatever you want and uh, go on forever without actually finishing anything. Um, so I kind of like having the uh, restrictions, I guess. I'm probably going to regret saying that in like five years, <laughs> but <laughs> right now, like I really like having these kind of like goals and like certain points that you have to hit and, you know, deadlines and everything that really kind of, it helps me move along and like get to where we need to be musically. Mm. I guess a lot of that comes down to who the director is as well and that, that relationship. Sure. I've been really lucky where all the directors I've worked with so far have been really amazing guys and have always been really open to whatever the story might need. Let's talk. Let's actually just talk purely about the film for for a brief moment. And mm -hmm. I think um, one one thing to you know ask is what attracted you to the film. You know, outside of the music side of things, from a narrative point of view, you know, what was attractive about working on this film? Um, I think the very first things were one meeting David. And he's such an amazing person. Um, I'm so happy I can call him my friend. Uh, and then once I read the script and met Colin as well. I just, you know, it's such a beautiful story and such a strong script that I felt immediately attached to it. Um, I'm always kind of like a visual person when I'm reading where I always picture whatever is happening. Mm. And this was something where I could just see it the whole time. And, you know, after talking with Colin, also a huge superhero fan, uh, I just felt like these were people I could really work with and connect to, um, and which is important to me, like just starting out in this new venture, pretty much, that... I want to find people that can we can meet on a common ground. Mm. Um, so between like the beautiful, heart wrenching story and these amazing people involved with it, I was like, yes, please let me come on board. And looking ahead to the rest of the year, you know, what's mm -hmm. uh, what's 2014 holding holding for you? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I just finished this, and I also finished a documentary that was at Sundance a couple months ago. Um, and now we're kind of waiting to see what happens next. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get we get this screened in Australia at some point as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, look at it to you soon.